We are in backup exec 20.1, and I'm going to show you how to backup a server. In previous videos, we installed the product and added the storage, which you see here. Let's go ahead and do our first backup. So we're going to right click and choose backup, and we have the option to backup to cloud storage, which we do not have at this time. Backup to disk, which we do have. Uh, we can also backup to disk and convert it into being a virtual machine. And we can back up to disk and simultaneously convert to virtual machine. Now, just to let you know, in previous versions, these two options have not always worked. So uh, we'll go ahead and test that out in upcoming videos and see how it goes. Let's go ahead and choose back up to disk. By the way, we are working on a Windows 2016 server. And it will, of course, install on older versions as well. But it does require a server. You can no longer install it onto a desktop version. So on the left-hand side, let's go ahead and click on Test Edit Credentials just to make sure that the username that we're logged in with will also be able to run the backup. Now, sometimes this takes a while to run, so be prepared uh, to be a little bit patient because, uh, it, especially if you have a lot of different resources on here, it needs to test one each individually. Looks good that we were successful. Don't worry about Microsoft SQL. We're not actually backing that up. That's the SQL uh, that's running Backup Exec itself. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now we'll click on Edit to take a look and see what resources we're going to be backing up. By default, it's going to choose everything. Uh, but we may decide we don't want everything. So we, for instance, we can uncheck Microsoft SQL Server, the system state, whatever it is we want to uncheck and uh, we can individually check things as well. So if I uncheck the C drive and I want to just back up the Windows directory and the program data directory, I can do that. If I change my mind and say take it all, then I'll check it again, and it checks everything. Let's go ahead and click OK, and now click on the right side where it says Edit for the type of backup jobs. So we've got multiple different backup job uh, options, and by default, you're going to get the full and the incremental backup jobs. So if you want to go ahead and keep those, those are fine. You can certainly change the date and the time that they run. So you can change it from weeks to months to days, et cetera. You can also change the date of which the first backup job runs. You can also choose to include and exclude dates in case you have certain holidays or things where you don't want to worry about going and checking the backup. If we go up to add a backup job, we can see that we have incremental, differential, and full. So we do want to run a full backup on a regular basis, whether it's once a week or once a month, but we don't want to run a full every night because it's going to take up a lot of storage space, which we may or may not have. So a full backup once a week or once a month is a great idea. And then uh, you have to choose between incremental and differential. So what incremental does is it backs up any data that's changed since the day before. The good thing about that is it doesn't use a lot of space, and it also backs up very quickly. The other option is to go with differential. Now, instead of uh, backing up any data that's changed since the day before, it backs up any data that's changed since the last full backup. So that basically means that it only takes two files to do a restore, the last differential and the last full whereas the incremental requires every single backup from the day you did it all the way to the last full. So, uh, so there's an advantage and a disadvantage to each. If you go with incremental, it backs up faster. Differential backs up slower. Differential restores faster. Incremental restores slower because it has a lot more files to go through. So you just have to decide which way is more important, uh, speed or the amount of space that's taken up, etc. By default, it likes incremental best, so we'll just go ahead and leave incremental, and we'll tell it to back up every night at 11 o'clock. All right, so if we go to storage, by default, it's going to use the only storage that we have, but you can change that if you'd like, if you have multiple storage devices. Otherwise, it'll just choose whatever storage is free, and it's going to keep that job for two weeks without overwriting it. So even if the data completely fills up in the storage, it's not going to overwrite that data for at least two weeks and incremental for at least one week. So keep that in mind when you start planning for how much storage you need. When we go to network, it'll choose the network interface uh, that, that's available by default. But if you have multiple network interfaces, it's not a bad idea to have one network interface for backup and another network interface for client access. So that way you don't end up using all the bandwidth available because it will use all of the bandwidth available when backing up one server from another. 
Notifications, we're going to do a little bit more detail in an upcoming video, but you can add notifications for uh, users that you've added their email address in the backup exec settings. You can do a test run before you run the actual backup, just make sure it's going to work. And verification, make sure the files are actually on the backup drive, which I definitely recommend you do. Advanced Open File basically uses Volume Shadow Service in order to uh, back up any files that may be open while you do your backup job. So for example, if you have uh, a user with an Excel document open, if you don't use Snapshot or, or the um, Volume Shadow Service backup, then it won't back up that file because it's open. With Snapshot technology turned on, it will still back that up. If you're having problems with processing power, you can move that backup processing from the remote computer to the backup exec computer if the backup exec computer is a little beefier than the computer you're trying to back up, and that will keep that server from running too slow. If you are good at scripting, you can do pre and post commands to restart services or do anything else that you would like to do if you need to prior to a backup running. File and folder options. These are options that have been available in every backup exec version all the way back to the first one, which I used was version seven back in the late nineties. So uh, basically you've got backup files and directories by following junction points, mount points, following symbolic links. Whether you check these or not, you're still gonna be able to back up your files. These are not that important. Let's go ahead and go to Microsoft SQL. And you can see that by default, it will do a backup of the database, databases and it will flush the logs as well. It'll do, it can do both full and incremental. I've found from personal experience that uh, many times the incremental, the differential SQL backups just don't work. So I'm hoping in version 20.1 they will, but I would do a test first before assuming that that's going to work properly. Uh, typically, you end up having to do a full backup each night rather than going with full and incremental. The good news about Microsoft SQL, however, though, it doesn't usually use that much data. So even if you did end up doing a full backup, even on incremental nights, uh, then it's not gonna use up that much space. You can exclude certain files if you'd like. So if you chose an entire hard drive, they like to say, ah, I'd like every hard drive file except for this one. Well, then you can certainly go in and add specific files and folders for it to exclude if you'd like. Once it's all done, we'll click OK, and then we'll click OK, and then watch what happens to our backup job as soon as the screen goes away. We can see that it now says first backup is scheduled, and we can see the next backup date and time. If you'd like, you can go and right-click and choose Edit Backups and go right back and make changes to those if you'd like. And when we're all done, if you say, hey, I want this backup job to run now because I don't you know, want to wait for uh, this next Friday or Saturday to happen. So you can right click on it and you can say run next backup uh, job now. You can also do what's called a one time backup. So if you click on one time backup to disk, then it will give you the same options that it did before, except for it's going to be a full backup. On the left-hand side, you're going to see the same test edit credentials. You're going to see the same resources. And on the right-hand side, you're going to see all the same options as far as storage and network and things like that go. And when you're done, just go ahead and click OK, and you'll see the backup job starting to run. At first, you're going to see backing up, as you see here, and you see the amount of time it's taking. If you hover over, you get a little bit more detail. And then uh, you're going to see in a second that it's actually doing its backup if you double click on it. So we see the byte count here and we see it's zero right now, but uh, within a few seconds, we should start seeing that byte count go up. Now, sometimes on slower systems, instead of taking a few seconds, it might take five or six minutes and that's perfectly okay as well. Sometimes you just need to be patient. And we can see after just about a minute, it has already gotten 140 megabytes, and you can see the speed is running at 349 megabytes per minute. If we scroll to the right, we see a little bit more detail, such as the data retention, the priority, and the schedule, etc. And in upcoming videos, we'll show how to restore files, and we'll also show some other backup exec features on version 20.1.